don't care. I'm saying it. I don't care. I'm saying it. The Nets will be bounced with the Nets. Let me be more clear. <clears throat> the Brooklyn Nets with Kyrie, KD, and Kevin Lo I say Kevin Love. Kyrie, KD, and James Harden will be bounced out the first round. You heard me correctly. By who? I don't know, and I don't care. But you know what? It depends on who they face, you know, in the pay, and it also depends on where, you know, their 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 seating and you know whatever their seating is, you know, uh, right now they are currently second, I believe. So if the season were to end tomorrow, they would have probably been taking on the seventh seed, or what, or waiting to because obviously they have to play the play in. And then obviously after that is the playoffs, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's very complicated, you know, how they did it. I, w I wish they would have just gone back to the old format, the 1 through 8 format. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, hopefully, but anyways, uh, but yeah, man, I guarantee that the Brooklyn Nets is going to lose in the first round. Now, I said that, you know, it could be the Sixers. It could be my Knicks. It could be some streaky team that nobody expects. So, it could be even the Heat. It could be the Bucks. So, any of those teams can beat the Nets. But if I had to pick one, I think Philly. Now, obviously, I don't think Philly is going to face them because of the seedings. But if it seems like the the, the, the the Heat or the Bucks, I could see them beating them. Just saying. Because I can't stand the Nets. I never liked it them. They should never came to Brooklyn. They should have just kept their raggedy ass back in New Jersey where they were selling freaking low ticket sales. You know? Like, nobody even wanted to go to New Jersey to even watch them. Like, I remember I had to go all the way to Brooklyn just to freaking watch my Knicks team because where I live, they've, they, televised, they televised only Nets games, which is atrocious. And the only time I'll see my Knicks if they're facing them, sometimes, you know, Sunday night, you know, because, you know, back then, they used to show um, movies on Sunday and Saturday night. You know what I'm saying? So, that's the only time I'll get to see my Knicks play. You know, but other than that, that's all I got was just New Jersey games. And I was just fed. Every time they turn out, I just turn the TV off. Or I just watch something else. Or I just go outside and play basketball. But I just hate the Nets. I hate them. They sucked in New Jersey. They're sucking in Brooklyn. They just, you know what the Nets are doing? This is typical one on one advertisement. Kyrie, KD, and James Harden don't really care. They don't. Because if they took this seriously, if they took this seriously, the Brooklyn Nets would have won 60 games already. They would have been 61 and 21, to be honest with you. That's just my personal opinion. If the Nets took this seriously, they would have been 61 and 21. But since the amount of games that KD missed, James Harden missed, Kyrie missed, they are where they are, you know? So, I mean, I don't even think they're going to reach the 50 mark, to be honest with you. Because how many games they got left? Nine, eight, eleven games left? So, they're going to have to go on a tear. They're going to have to win throughout. They're going to have to pull what the Knicks pull. Probably win like 13 or 14 or, or, or 11 or 15 straight. Or just finish the regular season out on a tear. Just blowing teams out, 
you know. Like, the Nets have yet to face the Clippers. I don't even think they face the Clippers. I know they face the Clippers, but I don't know if they face them now, you know. Uh, they have yet faced the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? They have yet faced Milwaukee. So they're going to be facing these teams that they're going to be facing later on down the road. You know what I'm saying? And everybody wants this dream match of the Lakers and the Nets. I, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. So, my homeboy sent me this picture. Was It was funny and crazy at the same time. <clears throat> it was funny and crazy at the same time. Like, yeah, shit was just ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why my throat is like that. <clears throat> but anyways, um, yeah, man. So, I just think that the Nets are going out in the first round. And... Before anybody says, well, you don't know what you're talking about, this and that, look at their track record in the playoffs. It's atrocious. It's not good. They've been bounced out in the first, second. Like, it's not good. They have not, they have not sniffed the NBA Finals since Dr. J well, not since Dr. J, but since they had the big three in 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 in, in Jason Kidd, Kenny and Martin, and Vince Carter. That's the last time they remotely been relevant since those three. You know? So it's not the next year. Maybe next year. Maybe if they all get together, play more games, because right now. I, I like I said again, it's chemistry issues with them, you know. Now if they all were in the same page, they all played together. Like I said, they would have won sixty games if Kyrie, no, if KD played all seventy two games. Now obviously he'll rest in between, but if KD would have played, I'll probably say seventy percent of his games. Kyrie, 50%, James Harden, 60%, they would have been 61 and 21. But, like I said again, teams that have baggage, team that goes on Twitter and badmouth other people, teams that says ridiculous, players that t- that says ridiculous stuff, they're not equipped to win a championship. Now, Again, it's not going to be their fault. It's not going to be their fault. Because Blake did sign a one-year deal. Kyrie and KD can opt out if they choose to. Like, they don't, I don't think they want to go through another, you know, offseason again. You know what I'm saying? Because what if Kyrie and KD dip, then what? You're going to be left with James Harden. Because James Harden is the only person... It's the only player that signed a long-term deal. That had to sign a long-term deal with them. I think it was like three years in a in an option. So Kyrie and KD can split. And you can say, you know what? I tried. We tried. You know what I'm saying? It didn't work out. You know? And then Kyrie is going to probably join the team that beat him in the playoffs. K- KD is probably going to go to the team that beat him in the playoffs. Kyrie's probably going to beg his little daddy to bring him back because he's worthless without him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he can't do nothing without him. He went to Boston, didn't work out. Left Cleveland, went to Boston, didn't work out. Now with the Nets saying, you know, Earth is flat and all this nonsense. So he's probably going to beg his little daddy to come back, beg him to come back. You know what I'm saying? Because Kyrie, because James do miss Kyrie. Let's be honest. If Kyrie was on the Lakers right now, they wouldn't need Shooter. Shooter would have probably been coming off the bench if Kyrie was on the Lakers. But since Kyrie don't want to coattail LeBron James' shadow, he thinks that he could do it by himself. He thinks that he can win without LeBron James. It is what it is. 
but he's not gonna get there because he's gonna get lim- he's gonna get eliminated in the first round anyways. So my bold prediction, I guarantee that the Brooklyn Nets will lose in the first round. Now I'm not saying that they're gonna get swept. I'm pretty sure they probably they they are they gonna do two things. They are they gonna take this game to seven, whoever they face, or they're gonna lose and they're gonna lose in five. No, they're gonna lose in let's see one, two, three. They're gonna lose in six. They're gonna lose either in six or five, and then that's gonna be it. So they're gonna lose. Probably four to two. They might probably take two games at home, win two games at home, or probably take or probably win one game on the road and probably win two games or probably win one at home or probably one on the road. Because the first, I think the first two games you at home and then the next two games they're at home. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm pretty sure they'll probably get one game or both games at home, or if not, they'll probably still one on the road. It is what it is. But I guarantee that the Nets will go down in the first round. Because just like my head coach always used to tell me, history repeat itself. And that's legendary. That's facts. History does repeat itself. Because if you look, go back, Back and look at the track record, man. It speaks for itself. The Nets have been atrocious during the playoffs when it comes to the playoffs. It's either they lose in the first round or probably lose in the second round or probably lose in the, uh, in the Eastern Conference Finals. And now they don't even get far, you know? I mean, they've been stacking up. You would, you would think that from all those teams, you would think that from all those super teams, all those super teams that they have acquired over the years with with Joe Johnson, Daryl Williams, Brooke Lopez, from Jason Kidd to Kenny and Martin to Vince Carter, from, you know, I mean, obviously, if you want to say Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, the big two, whatever have you, even though they were past their prime, they were still great players. You know, like, I don't believe that, oh, they were past their prime. They're still great players. You know, it don't matter how old you are. Look at Ric Flair. Ric Flair has been wrestling since the 90s, the 80s, and he's been in the early 2000s, and he's still wrestling. Went to TNA, wrestled with Mick Foley there. So it don't matter how old you are. Wrestling has no age limit. Just like how the NBA has no age limit. You're still great. You're still technically great. Kevin Garnett is not a bust. Paul Pierce is not a bust. They're all-stars. They may be past their prime, but they're still considered all-stars. And they actually took the Nets to the playoffs. Even though they got, I think they got swept by the Heat. But other than that, you know, you've, you, you would have learned that from making all these super teams, it didn't work. You know? It didn't work. You fired. You had coach. You had Jason Kidd as your head coach. You fired him for Lano Call Colin. You know Billy Kill. I mean Billy King. I, I think his name was. He was a trash owner. I mean trash GM. You know they hired um, Atkinson, who was pretty good. Not the best, but he was pretty good. That was their last. I think two thousand and. 16, 15, I believe. That was their last playoff appearance after they let go of uh, um, D'Lo, you know? I'm pretty sure that they had a pretty good squad when they had D'Lo. They let him go, and they were trash. And then now they made this move. Big three, obviously, Aldridge. The Marcus Aldridge had to retire. You know what I'm saying? But... Now, everything is just coming to plan, you know. They have a head coach that they wanted. Couldn't pay. I mean, they had a lot of candidates, too, you know. They had Jason Kidd, you know. Uh, they had Tyron Lue. They had, uh, they had Doc, but obviously Doc went to the um, uh, Philly. So, they were just, 
it was just down to three choices. Kid, Lou, or um, Steve Nash. And they chose Steve Nash. Steve Nash, in his lustrous career, he's never been great on defense. He never was. And now you have Mike D'Antoni, who's even a worse defensive schemer, who don't play defense at all, who had the uh, seven seconds or six seconds or less when they had, you know, Dwight and Sean and, and Steve Nash. They didn't even crack the mold. So what makes you think this team is going to crack the mold? But anyways, man, we'll see in a couple of months. I'm very hyped up. I can't wait. The suspension is driving me crazy, to be honest with you, because I just want the season to be done with, you know. Because um, I think the more we play, or I think the more they play, the more the more injuries is going to start piling up, and we don't want that, you know what I'm saying? Because people, people are going to jump the gun, oh, well, if he wasn't injured, this would have happened, or if this would have happened, or if he wasn't injured, this would have happened, like... Dude, they've been injured throughout the whole entire season. So what makes that you think? What makes you think they're gonna get healthy at the right time? What makes you think that they're gonna click at the right time? They still have to go out there and play defense. They still have to do this. They still have to do that. You cannot put your energy all on offense, because yes, offense offensively, they feel like nobody can guard them offensively, but they'll give up a hundred and. 24 points on defense, but as long as they can outscore the opposition, they have no problem. And that's going to be their Achilles heel. Just like Superman. Superman is the greatest superhero of all time. But what is Superman's greatest weakness? Kryptonite. The Nets have Kryptonite. Go big on them, game is over. Game is over. If you go big on them, the game is over because they got nobody that can stop the paint. Now, obviously, if the Nets were smart, they would have kept Jared Allen. I would have traded Joe Joe Harris, to be honest with you, because knowing that you need rim protector, knowing that you got uh, um, Spencer Dimwitty and Karis LeVert, those two are good enough to make their own shot because they're very great shot correct, uh, creators. You know, plus Kyrie and KD. So so now that you got uh, uh, DeAndre Jordan coming off the bench, you still got Allen. Then I would have probably looked at them differently. But since they got nobody, it kind of reminds me of the 2014 Heat, where they had nobody. But obviously, they still made it work because they had the big three, you know. Um, and obviously it was LeBron James' first championship. He was trying to capture his first championship, just like James Harden. James Harden thinks that, okay, I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing um, in OKC. I was more, I was mainly a backup coming off the bench. I didn't like my role. I went to Houston. Houston basically gave me the keys. The Houston Rockets gave me the keys to the city. They gave me Clint. They gave me Dwight. They gave me Westbrook. They gave me Chris Paul. None of them worked. None of them. So what makes you think Kyrie and KD is going to make any difference? Look at Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant spent all those years in OKC, obviously, via, you know, uh, Supersonics, moved to OKC, spent probably like, Eight years there, made the finals once, lost, kept on losing, either to the Mavericks or the Lakers, and then couldn't get past the Warriors, went to the same team that beat them, won two championships, and now dipped, and now he's in with the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Kyrie, similar situation, you know? Got drafted, spent probably like eight or seven years with the uh, Cavaliers. LeBron James left before he got drafted there. Um, let me see. He didn't like his role, and he 
the man or act for a trade. They traded him to the, whatever destination he wanted to. Boston Celtics didn't like it there. Had problems with that organization. He asked for a trade or demanded for a trade. Now he's with the Nets. So 